I'm John Davis and we're in the field in Waco, Texas. We're here at the Lake Waco Wetlands. It's 180 acres of man-made wetlands created when they raised the water levels of Lake Waco. The creatures that were displaced from the original wetlands found a new home here, including many amphibian species of frogs and toads. And this is something that Philip Seifert, how are you? How are you? Studies on a regular basis. Philip, you were studying these creatures and trying to find out how climate change is going to impact their lives. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yep, that's the goal here. So what I do is I look at um, species of spring breeding frogs and toads that uh, utilize the wetland habitats here. And what I'm really interested in is, well, we're expecting climate change to really impact amphibians, among other species, but I'm worried about the frogs. Um, we're expecting them to, over the next hundred years, to well, their environment's going to change. So what is going to happen to these guys? We expect there to be winners and losers in that. So maybe the heat and the differences and precipitations that we're expecting is going to help some of these species. But there's also probably going to be some losers where they're not as apt to really survive in the new changing climate. So this, this field <coughs> is basically your laboratory. Yeah, exactly. I see. What makes this place so special for what you're doing? Well, what's really cool about this area is, A, it's run by the city, so uh, it's kept really nice and pristine. We've got a lot of paths here, so it's really easy to access. And whenever you're trying to do a field study, if it's easy to access, bueno. Um, the second part of it, we've got six or eight different species of um, frogs and toads that live in the wetlands here that I, again, have direct access to. And the lab space that I have is right into our research facility just up the hill. So when you can go out into the field, which is just a few hundred meters away, collect your animals, bring them in, you can't really ask for a better setup. Well, that's perfect. That sounds great. So um, what are we going to be doing today? How are we going to be helping you with your research? So I uh, brought you down here with the intent of hoping to find some eggs, because eggs are what I really need for the lab. That's what I'm going to base my experiments on, is looking at the development from eggs to um, the tadpoles and then into their adults. But we haven't had any water in about a month and a half here in Waco, so right. it's pretty dry. But also part of my project, aside from the laboratory stuff, I'm also trying to get some just baseline data. What species really are here? What time of the summer and spring are they really utilizing these wetlands? And how does that sort of change throughout the year? And even though it's really sort of dry here today, that is part of the natural system. Sometimes it's a really dry year. So what we'll hopefully be able to find is, you know, what species are we really finding? Which ones are still calling and making noise here tonight and last night? Um, and really just see who's home. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's go see what we can find. Sounds great. All right. Green tree snake. It's a rough green tree snake. And they are one of the prettiest freaking animals. They're absolute, like, this is as mean as they get. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Please don't let this one go yet. Okay. But yeah, they are just sweethearts and just as pretty as can be. Are they native to the area? Yep, absolutely. Do they like to be around the wetlands? Is that this they, where they live? Or? They like trees. Uh -huh. um, they are tree snakes, and but having a body of water means that there's going to be food nearby for them. And oh my goodness. That's pretty cool. I'm glad you guys got me up this morning. There you go. see what we can find down here. So how are we doing this, Philip? What do you want me to do? So I'm um, hoping to get a good idea about what, uh, what frogs are really left hanging around the wetlands. So I know that there's a handful jumping around here. So if you see some, just kind of have at it. Okay. Um, you've got a dip net, just try to give it your best and uh, catch it. You may end up with a lot of mud in there, but that doesn't mean the frog's not in there. So oh, you may okay. have to sift through some mud. Um, when you do get your hands on them, just try to be careful. They're small little critters, so okay. do your best to handle them uh, humanely. But yeah, just to have you walk around a little bit, walk around the edge, and then if you see something, go for it. Hey, here, about your friend. Why don't you check this little guy out? All right. Just be careful. He should be harmless. Just a little garter snake, baby. They're taking refuge in this last little puddle. Cool. Keeping, keeping cool on a hot day. Mm -hmm. 
Here's, here's these bugs I found. <clears throat> Wait, is that a shrimp? Probably. We have shrimp in here. That's a shrimp. Yep. Well, fairy shrimp. Or gla sorry, glass shrimp. Glass not a fairy shrimp. shrimp. It's a glass shrimp. So a lot of these animals, obviously the fish, if these wetlands dry out, that's not good for them. Yeah. Um, but being a wetland, a lot of the animals, like my frogs, they need that sort of periodical wiping out of the bigger predators. So even though this looks sad and everything's sort of dying right now, um, sometimes a dying fish is a happy frog. So these are southern cricket frogs. Um, one of the species I'm actually looking at, they're super duper common around here. Um, hopping around sort of anywhere that there's a puddle. They're pretty resilient to the drought. They don't mind hanging out on a little bit more drier land. You can see how their skin's a little bit um, granulose, a little bit bumpy, and that kind of helps them uh, keep their water in a little bit better than most other small frogs, some frogs their size. Well, let's see if we can get any more frogs. All right. Let's see if I can get out. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here, it's right. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. You can't swear, this can't go in the video. I know. Okay, <laughs> let's do this. You want your boot out? Yeah. Okay. No, abandon it. That's fine. Just leave. <laughs> Can you get it? Bloop. Anybody? So frogs in general are really great bioindicator species, and by that I mean they really don't do well in bodies of water unless that body of water is actually doing pretty well and it's a good healthy environment. Here at the Lake Waco wetlands we have a lot of different species of frogs because it is such a great healthy environment. Right now because it's sort of drying out, we have the ones that are a little bit more resistant to that um, drying conditions, so we don't really have uh, the chorus frogs out right now because they really um, don't like this stagnant water where there's a whole bunch of concentrated fish and stuff but these guys are pretty mobile they do a pretty good job of escaping predators and um, they'll hang in here as long as there's any water really left at all that, that's cool so this is a northern one there, yeah right? and so what was throwing me off is they both the plains in the northern have whoop, fairly round spots um, as opposed to some of the other leopard frogs, but these guys, like you mentioned, have the often have the green circles around their spots. Oh, okay, so that's the difference. Yeah, that's cool. So tell me what this is, Philip. What are we, what are we about to do? So we've got an audio logger here, and we're going to set it out. And I set these out um, sort of all summer long, and in the spring. The gist of it is, is I can tell what frogs are calling at night just by the sounds. So if I set this out at night, we can pull it up in the morning um, and have a listen to what it was able to record. Then I can tell without having to be here what frogs are actually active during the night. I see. How so, many uh, how many frogs species do you have out here? Do you guys know? So throughout the summer, we probably have six or eight species. Um, we've got American bullfrogs, a couple species of leopard frogs, a couple species of chorus frogs that can be here. Um, there's a cricket frog species and then two or three species of toad that we have. So actually probably a little bit more than that. We've got a pretty good amount of uh, amphibian diversity here at the wetlands. So what we may hear is a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of songs from a <laughs> that, whole bunch of species. That'd be great. We'd love to hear that. It's a little bit sort of the dog days of summer and it's a little bit quieter so we probably won't hear more than one or two but we'll see what we can hear. Okay, sounds great. What do I do? So I'm going to have you just take this and okay. um, since it's night I don't think we have to worry about um, anyway, messing with that. So I think we're just going to set it kind of off, point the actual mic, it's listening to us right now, um, at the wetland. And you can just kind of like hide it in the bushes. And what it's going to do is it's going to take a five minute recording every two hours all night long. All right. Easy enough. Let's do it. Yep. Just like that. Yep. I don't think you can mess it up. All right. With that. So then we wait until morning. Yeah, we'll wait until morning. All right, let's get out of here. All right, sounds good. All right.
Philip, good to see you again. Good to see you as How well. How are you doing? Not too bad. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. So, the last time I saw you, we were knee deep in mud. Good times. That was very good times. Um, and also, before we left, we left a little box out to get some frog recordings. Did we have any luck with that? We did. We heard some frogs that night. I actually cherry-picked a few of the uh, more exciting moments, in my opinion, if you'd like to take a listen. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's let's hear it. So I'm not using really any fancy software or anything. I just, okay. got, I just download them as MP3 files onto my laptop, uh -huh. put, put them on iTunes, and um, we can listen. Can you hear that? Yeah. So if you remember those tiny little cricket frogs I was showing you last time, they're hopping around the edge. Oh, the ones that like, uh, the real tiny ones that were in the cracks and they jumped really high? Yep. Yeah. That's those guys making all that noise. Oh, okay. So we, I pretty much only heard that. We, um, we do have some other frogs obviously in the wetlands, but uh, all those guys seem to be hanging out elsewhere and they really weren't in the calling mood, I guess, that night. I so um, what we learned from that, well, when the ponds are really, really dry, there's not a whole lot of things trying to call, but I guess there were a few a few cricket frogs trying at least. I see. Well, they seem to like that kind of condition, right? They kind of thrive under those conditions? <laughs> cricket frogs seem to thrive under a lot of conditions. Yeah. So, at least I'm not sure if they were going to have a lot of success. Um, it seems like there was a lot of potential predators in that tiny little puddle, but it doesn't mean the guys won't try at least. Well, mm, <laughs> who can blame them for trying? That's right. <laughs> So, what have we learned? Well, sometimes nature doesn't work with you like you'd like when you're a scientist, and in this case, it didn't work in our favor when uh, the wetlands dried out and we weren't able to find the frog eggs. However, that didn't stop us from learning because we did find out what frogs like to live around drier wetlands when the water does go away. For In the Field, I'm John Davis. Like what you see? <laughs> box office gold, isn't it? Make sure you click the subscribe button to get more of this magic. There! Victory! Alright. Wasn't this worth it? Wasn't this all worth it for you? <laughs>